James Gibbons Hunecker was an American art and music critic. He was born in 1857 in Philadelphia, the son of house painter John Joseph Hunecker and Mary Gibbons. He attended Broad Street Academy and was forced into a legal apprenticeship, but abandoned law and sailed for France in 1878 with his pregnant future wife Elizabeth, auditing the piano class of composer Georges Matthias while in Paris. In 1880, Hunecker and his wife returned to Philadelphia, but in 1886 he abandoned his wife and child to move to New York. He scraped by by giving piano lessons before becoming a full-time freelance art, music and theatre critic, working for the New York Sun, Harper's Bazaar or Puck among others. As a critic, he promoted the works of Wagner and Richard Strauss before these were broadly accepted in the US, as well as supporting Theodore Dreiser and Henry James. On the other hand, he believed the work of Giacomo Puccini to be a mere passing fad, thought the work of primitivist Henri Rousseau to be pathetically ludicrous, and doubted the merits of Whitman and Oscar Wilde. In 1892, he married sculptor Cleo Hinton, but the marriage ended in 1899. He died of pneumonia in New York in 1921. Most of his works were books on music, such as his biography of Chopin. But in 1902, he did publish the first of his two collections, Melomaniacs, the other being his 1905 Visionaries. We shall be reviewing the former. Melomaniacs is a difficult book to read. For one thing, its chief fault is how dreadfully monothematic it is. Every single story is in some way tied to music, and the subject is usually either Chopin or Wagner adjacent. Indeed, Chopin seems a particular obsession with Hunecker, who mentions his name 97 times in the text. The monothematic nature is also evident in the settings. So many different singers wishing to sing Wagner real good. So many pianists wanting to play Chopin just right. It becomes grossly tedious at times to end a story and then start yet another story of a person going on about Hunecker's favourite subjects. And of course, they all share his opinions, so not one single person has anything good to say about Bach, for example. Of the 24 stories, only about 4 or 5 stand out at all. The rest is so much white noise. To sum up the refuse, they're stories of a drunkard critic's wife going to cover a debut for him as he's passed out at home plied with beer, a pretentious man who wrote one line of his proposed novel in ten years lecturing people on prose, or the funeral of a celebrated tenor and bigamist. Music the Conqueror is the only story set in ancient Rome and involves Diocletian having some Christians eaten by lions, but it's short and ends in a confusing way. The Lord's Prey in B has a Jewish atheist seized by the Inquisition, and then strung up on a cross and tortured with the Lord's Prayer for six days to try and break him to accept their God. The Piper of Dreams is a brilliant affair concerning Pavel Ilovsky, creating wild, strange, bizarre music that leads to massive, violent, pagan unrest, riot, fire, murder and death, as he is banished from country to country, eventually upsetting the world order forever with his final apocalyptic performance. An involuntary insurgent has Raka, who hates music, become a noted piano player, but hating the piano and Chopin, he leaves Europe, but winds up at the court of a despotic Raja who loves Chopin, and has a servant cut off all his fingertips. The Disenchanted Symphony takes place in Balak, a fictional Balkan country Hunica used exactly twice in the whole book, and concerns Poblov creating a symphony according to his pet theories concerning time in the fourth dimension, which if played just right makes the entire orchestra, including his own wife, disappear.